I play a lot of TF2, and when you play a lot of a game, you're bound to find some weird weapon interactions and hidden mechanics that the game doesn't reveal straight away. And that's exactly the point of this video. Here are 10 hidden mechanics that you probably don't know about. Now I made sure that these mechanics aren't well known because there's not that much value in telling you guys things that you already know. That's what's the point of this video being called hidden mechanics. And you might know a couple of these, but I bet you don't know all of them. Starting with number one, the ability to negate holster speed penalty. Now this mechanic works on obviously weapons that have the holster speed penalty, like the Fist of Steel and all of Demoman's swords. Like here's an example of the difference it gives. The five. Four, three, two, one, go. What? What happened? Three, two, one, go. Poor man. All I'm doing is if I want to go to my primary, I switch to my secondary and then quick switch to my primary. If I want to go to my secondary, I switch to my primary weapon and then switch to my secondary. Now this mechanic to somewhat get rid of the holster speed penalty isn't really that overpowered or breaks the game. It's just a quick little way to shred off a couple of seconds because the penalty still has an effect on you because to negate it, you're switching twice, which is still slower than just switching to the weapon you want. Just be wary of when you're using the Rap Assassin because this Rap Assassin has this weird bug where you can't actually shoot through some sections of the map. Like here on High Tower, you can't actually shoot through this section just because that's where the cart goes and it goes up. I'm guessing the reason for this is simply because you can't play stickies there, you can't jurate that section. It doesn't also work here on Nucleus, which is a big pain if you're using the Rap Assassin. You can't actually shoot on the point or when you're in the point, you can't shoot out. It just disappears in front of you and damages you. You can't necessarily tell where these invisible force fields are for the Rap Assassin. You kind of just have to test it. Zapped buildings take 33% less damage from only spies. Any other sources of damage when the building is zapped will take the same amount of damage, but for just spies, if you're shooting it with the revolver, if you're trying to knife it to death, you actually do less damage to it if it's zapped. This is quite noticeable because up close, you do 40 damage to sentries, but when you zap them, you only do 26 damage. It's kind of like a hidden downside of the zapper where you do 33% less damage. It is written on wiki, but I didn't even know about it. The Sandman got nerfed, where you can't actually pick up your own bull, but for some reason you can pick up the enemy's bull, and the enemy can actually pick up your bull, which is kind of weird. This also means if you shoot your bull, and then the enemy actually shoots you with their Sandman near the waist, you actually grab their Sandman, and you can play like a little tennis match with this. Now if you shoot them in the head, it actually bounces off. You kind of have to shoot around the waist for them to pick it up. Oh my god. Tennis game. The next one's kind of popular, but a fair amount of people don't also know about it. You can actually jump over the Hulong Heater's flames with the Spicicle to stab him. Usually what happens is you would just go in and you phase your stab and oh no, oh, oh no. But you can pretty much jump over the flames, which is actually quite easy to do. A lot of you guys pointed this out to me and now that I know, I feel like the Hulong Heater's just being disadvantaged even more. I mean, what's the point of using the Hulong Heater now? There's actually no point because the flames are mainly for spy, and if a spy can just jump over the flames, the advantage of the Hulung Heater isn't really that effective anymore. The Soda Popper and the Force of Nature, considering they're a double barrel, they actually go through your ammo reserves slightly faster because if you shoot once and then reload it, it completely empties your clip and reloads both shots. This is way more noticeable on Man vs. Machine, where you, because look at this, I shoot once and then boom. So if you're running low on ammo with these weapons, it might be better to not reload or just shoot both shots so you don't waste a shot. It makes sense because it's a double barrel, but these are the only two weapons in the game that do this. The disciplinary action can hit players behind you. Yes, I don't know how it works. Uh, it is like 
doesn't make sense. The insane range is so broken. Now I wanted to see how far this goes. How big is the range really? So I got on top of the enemy and tried to see if hitting up would actually shoot below me. And no, it doesn't actually hit below me. But if the enemy got on top of me and I don't crouch, I am actually able to hit him, even though he's above me. Now the reason for this is the disciplinary action kind of has like a sphere surrounding the soldier's top, which means anything around that sphere can be damaged. But when you're crouching on top of someone, the sphere doesn't actually reach the player below him. Nothing can survive a telefrag. It doesn't matter if you're dead ringing, oomph, bonk, uber, nope, nothing can survive a telefrag. You can transfer your flock crits to any primary you want. This could be amazing if there's like a ton of soldiers capping the point. You can just switch to another flamethrower and reflect crit rockets. As for another weapon switch trick that still somehow works, yes, I did it. So still works. you can still do the parachute and primary combo with the demo or soldier. It works really good on demo, of course, but I guess it's not actually game breaking because it's more of a disadvantage than an advantage because you're in the air and snipers can easily take a shot at you. And honestly, it's more of a pain to be playing like this. Wait, you can like lose your weapon if you go to the ground? And yeah, those are the 10 hidden mechanics that you probably didn't know about. I'm hoping you don't know one of these. If you knew all of these, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna make a part two to this. So if you wanna be featured in it, then in the comments below, put some more hidden mechanics then I'll put your comment in the video if the hidden mechanic works. Go join my Discord if you wanna hop in when I'm testing out these mechanics because I need a lot of helping hands for these this type of video because I need people to help me test out weapons. Shout out to Peter Stick, Geoboat, Alris, French, Crossant, and some Jojo Penguin for helping me out with this video because they actually just spent like an hour just doing exactly what I said which was really helpful so shout out to them. And also shout out to Kraft for helping me out with the server because I've had a lot of server issues. If you don't know who Kraft is, he's that you know custom weapons guy. He has a couple of servers on his own and he's actually making a pretty big 600 weapon overhaul. One last thing, I have a friend that makes music and he actually made me this outro. And yeah, that's it. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. I ain't gonna pause for the comments. They ain't gonna live for the saga. Shooting my clips like Faga. I don't really mess with the talking. Go and check them stats, they popping. Kicking doors down, fuck knocking. Feel like the whole world watching. This whole shit's mine. You don't really want them problems. Okay, but you got them. Yeah. Okay, checks okay, like, yeah. Okay, I'm okay, oh yeah. Okay, it's okay, like, yeah. Okay, you so great, oh yeah.